Okay. Living in that desert was a man and his wife and mistress, Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. And no children yet. That's all he had. I know we talk about him being rich, but realize rich and rich in that culture means something very different. So one day God showed up. This is Genesis 15. I'll just walk you through it very abbreviated. God showed up and said, Abraham, I'm your shield, and you just won the lottery, which is basically what great reward means. You just won a big prize. I'm your shield and your prize. Why does God talk like that? Isn't that weird? If you were in your room tonight getting ready for your devotions and suddenly, boom, there was God, whatever form he took, and you knew. And God said, I am your shield and your reward. You just won the lottery. Okay. Why does he talk like that? Who's he talking to? Thank you. Abraham's a Jew. You've got to put it in pictures. Abraham needs to see it, to feel it. You know what a shield does, Abram? Yeah, it sheds uh, the arrows and the death blows. Yeah. You know what the lottery winnings are? Well, they probably didn't have a lottery, but unexpected, undeserved gift. Wow. Cool. Now, if God showed up in your room tonight and told you that, what would you do? What's your reaction? Oh my gosh, aren't you down on your face going, whoa. Why? Now what? Who me? Is my mother praying again? I mean, you'd be asking, wouldn't you be asking some, some questions? Abraham is Jewish. But, where's my kids? You promised me kids. Where are they? Tell me, that didn't take guts. And it's not in Hebrew a particularly respectful way to say it. I wouldn't say it's disrespectful. It's street talk. It's not formal. Dear Father, can you please explain to me, because I'm thick-headed, why I don't have any children yet? It's, where's my kids? You promised. Now, the Jews have a word for that attitude. It's in Hebrew, chatsufo. Chatsufo is translated into English, faith. Which I struggle with because it's not wrong, but chatsufo means a persistent, I will not let go of God under any conditions. No matter what, I will keep pushing and trying. I want to be there. The modern Hebrew word chutzpah. You know chutzpah? Chutzpah. Watch Seinfeld. Chutzpah comes <laughs> from this. Abraham's got chutzpah. He says, God, okay, you're my shield and your reward, my reward, but you promised me children. Where are they? It's the woman with a sick baby coming to Jesus and saying, Rabbi, I'm a Canaanite. I know you Jews don't mix with us, but my baby is sick. And I see Jesus beginning to cry. That's my guess. And he says, Lady, the Heavenly Father sent me to the lost sheep of Israel. You're not my mission field. I can't help you. It wouldn't be faithful to my father. We've got a saying, you don't give dog food to children and you don't give children's food to dogs. Give to those that it's supposed to be. I can't help you. I think he's crying. Ask him someday. Now, if I'd have been that woman, think about it. Well, who do you think you are, you Jews? You're going to not give me? The lady comes right back. Yes, you're right, Rabbi. We don't deserve this. But even the dogs go under the table and lick up what's left. Please, it's my baby. And Jesus turns to the disciples and says, I haven't seen faith like this. No, that's not the good truth. I haven't seen chutzpah. This lady won't quit. God likes people like that. He wants you in his face, respectfully. Wanting more than anything else to claim what he promised and what he wants. Go for it. So Abraham says, God, where's my kids? And God says, okay, Abraham, calm down. You're Jewish, I understand. <laughs> Come on outside. Come on outside. Look at the stars. You see them? Count them. I can't. That's what your descendants will be like. Promise. And Abraham says, that's good enough for me. <laughs> you promised me. You gave me a picture. You got it. Then God says, you know what, Abraham? 
There's so much I need to tell you here. You know what, Abram? I'm going to give you this land. Now, here's something you've got to write in big letters. If not in your notes, then in your mind. People take the phrase, the land, out of the Bible, and they assume that the promised land was something promised to Jews. And that applies to Jews. Well, there's a sense in which that's not, tr not false. That's correct. Land in the Bible is the place God gives you to serve Him. Are you guys mostly seniors, college seniors? Okay. Anybody here mind? Do you have a, a job already? I mean, something lined up? Are you? I, I need somebody who says, "Yeah, I, I got a pretty good idea what I'm doing." Anybody? We'll be working at Pizza Corporation uh, in Dallas. Okay. So you're fairly certain that's your land. The land God will give. What's your first name? Jeff. Jeff is going to be in the Pizza Hut corporate headquarters. Did you say? Pizza Hut corporate headquarters. That's his promised land. The land is the place God gives you to carry out your faithfulness. So God said, okay, Abram, and I'm going to give you this land. What do you think Abram did? He's Jewish. How can I know for sure? Prove it. Show me. I got nothing, God. If my wife were to die, I don't even have a tomb to bury her. Show me. How do I know? Tell me that didn't take chutzpah. He's talking to God here. And God says, Abram, you're right. I need to show you this. Now, what happens in this setting is what in the culture is called a covenant. Now just bear with me a minute. A covenant is not a relationship between equals. People talk about marriage covenant. I struggle with that. Unless you say that the couple who's marrying is unequal. A covenant is between a greater and a lesser person or party. There's a superior and a subordinate. Now, I think marriage is a covenant, but not the way it's traditionally looked at between a husband and a wife. I do not think that's the covenant. Because in a sense, there's headship and all of that, but equality, clearly, in Paul, we're all equal in Christ. I prefer to say the covenant in marriage is between Almighty God and the couple. So I have a marriage covenant. Esther and I are in covenant as husband and wife with God. And the weddings I do today as pastor are always in light of let's make covenant together with God. And then we'll promise each other stuff. Now, in the covenant then... The greater party, let's call him or her A, and the lesser party, B, agree to a relationship, a permanent relationship. Party A sets all the requirements. B has absolutely no choice but to accept or reject. Yes or no? All of the requirements, all of what's laid on A and B are determined by the greater party. Does that make sense? So if God is going to make a covenant with Abraham, who's the greater party? Who's going to make all the conditions? God. So what are the requirements of this covenant? Well, God says, A, I'm A, I'm God. Here's what I'll promise you. Here's what I'll lay on myself. I will give you land, place to serve me. I will give you descendants, like the stars. And one of them will be Messiah. Abraham doesn't know anything about that, but he knows that one of the descendants will bless all the nations of the world. Are you with me? And God says, that's my requirement. And Abraham says, okay, God, that's good. What's mine? And God said, well, that's a real simple one. Um, be perfect. <laughs> Easy to remember? You just be perfect. You be perfect, and I'll do whatever I promise. Land, descendants, Messiah. And God said, now I'm going to show you how serious I am about this. Let's seal the covenant in blood. 